Why the collector car industry has been ruined by dealers and self-promoters. Part 3. Focusing on solution. Part 3. Focusing on solutions. So if you guys don't want to watch this because you think it's just going to be some sort of like mamby pamby kumbaya positivity video that talks about the solution to the problem and this and that and we have to be nice and positive, this isn't really the case at all. This is more going to be like a wake up call and maybe a little bit of a rant on my end, but we are still going to talk about the solution to the problem and um, what, you know, what people need to do. So we've talked about how, you know, most people infiltrating the classic car industry now are basically dealers and self-promoters who are trying to find some way to make money off of it without doing any real work. We're going to talk about what the classic car industry actually needs to succeed over the next 50 or 60 years. So uh, I'm going to start listing these things. I think in my line of work, the first thing we need is some cooperation from Mercedes-Benz Classic Center. A lot of the time, I as a mechanic and um, some of my other friends in the field notice that Mercedes-Benz of North America and ultimately Mercedes Classic has sort of taken a, um, uh, uh, a very uh, 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 neglectful approach to us acting like we don't exist or we don't matter. There's nobody at Classic we can call and ask about whether a part's going to be back in production or not, what their plan is to deal with shortage in supply, who the manufacturer is, etc., etc. They don't want us to know about that at all. I, I attribute part of this to a person who runs Classic Center named Michael Koontz, and I think it's not so much Michael's personality, but probably the fact that he's just overwhelmed trying to do his job. It is an overwhelming job running a classic center. I mean, heck, I can barely run a shop which does a fraction of their business. You know, imagine running an operation like the Mercedes-Benz Classic Center. But what it tells me is that MBUSA needs to put more people who could actually uh, deal with these on-the-ground problems such as part supply or manufacturing quality or, um, you know, supplier relations for our collector cars exclusively. Mercedes-Benz has long enjoyed the profits from the classic division. It's one of the most profitable divisions within Mercedes. It's not a money loser at all. Stuff sells out very quickly. Um, the only problem with the classic division is, again, it is understaffed and not really managed that well because of the understaffing. So. Number two, we need more people that are willing to actually get their hands dirty. So if we took half of the dealers, sent them to machinist school, maybe had a couple of training seminars through the MBCA, we could probably get some of them to actually provide real services so they could sort the cars out there selling or so they'd have to stop relying on inferior labor, or if they relied on third-party labor, they could at least judge the labor and make sure it was done right instead of having blind faith in the dealer tech that hates his job that came over and did a couple of things on the 240D that's going to be for sale soon. Now, some of the people who I know, like my buddy Chris, who's up in Long Island, Chris is a really hands-on guy. He works really hard to, to deal with the issues on his cars. And, he and I have talked about this before and he feels, I feel that his cars are better than most of the cars that come to market just because he's had personal involvement chasing all of their issues. Now, one of the other things that we could probably use to make the classic car buying process more transparent would be uh, more mechanics, better trained mechanics, mechanics that had a better interest in their job. But uh, in order to make this happen, we need to have training for those mechanics and we need to have some sort of guild or support structure, something for those people. Now, children who want to learn how to fix classic cars don't really have anywhere to go to school. They've got McPherson College in Kansas, which costs way too much money. But most of the car manufacturers are not willing to sink the money into schools to educate children about how to repair their classic cars. Like, what if Mercedes actually had their own school for classic techs? 
or Porsche or BMW or Jaguar, any of these heritage brands. I mean, that would be great. I mean, they could take like literally a couple of decimals. They could move the decimal over one place on their line, you know, on their, their, their profit percentage every year and run a school like this for kids who wanted to learn how to work on these cars. I mean, what a fantastic career that would be. But, you know, of course, nobody does this. Now, a fourth problem and solution to this would be, I think that part of it, part of the blame, we can always put part of the blame in the lap of the Mercedes-Benz Club of America. Um, the people who run NBCA, mark my words, unless the, with a few very specific exceptions, and you guys who know who you are, have no knowledge of and are not seeking to gather knowledge of classic Mercedes at all. And the fact that the MBCA is not a great resource for classic Mercedes uh, really does not help the hobby very much because people are looking at the clubs. They want a car club that can help them. Now, Porsche Club and Ferrari Club and some of the other clubs, great technical resources. But speaking strictly about Mercedes, um, you know, I would love it if our national president would do like a one week immersion course where she would actually learn about the things that would make classic Mercedes different. Now, I think there are some people in the NBCA that are working hard to keep it working, but most of them are older people who run the club, who have no idea how this stuff works and don't want to have an idea and don't have an interest anymore. They'd rather just talk and argue with each other, which talking and arguing is not a great way to get anything done. Hands on, you know, let's plan this, let's organize this, let's do this is uh, going to... Um, going to be the way forward with these things. And so I think finally, number five, uh, if I could probably call it a number five solution, it would be that people who have knowledge need to share it even if they don't want to. I know there are a lot of older technicians who are still with us who worked at Mercedes during the 70s and 80s. For God's sake, meet some young kids that have an interest in these cars and start sharing what you know. You know, it's exhausting. I have like 20, 20 or so younger guys that I mentor about these cars. It's getting exhausting. I wish other people would share some stuff they knew, you know? And um, because people are kind of afraid to ask for help, they never approach people and ask for help. So on the other hand, if you want to know about the cars, ask for help, you know? But also have some balls and don't be afraid to try stuff. You know, don't be, don't be afraid to try to fix the car. Just don't get discouraged when the solution doesn't work or the part's more expensive than you planned on it being. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Tap the bell for notifications. And, um, you know, enjoy driving your Mercedes. Leave a comment below. Give us that thumbs up. And um, thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. We really appreciate you guys. We will see you in the near future with another great video.